Okay, so I guess we'll uh, get started. Um, so before we start with uh, Fabio's final lecture, um, so just a couple of quick announcements. So uh, tomorrow we're gonna have another seminar. Uh, that'll be at the usual time for the QFT and geometry seminar series, uh, starting at uh, time. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, in addition to that, on Friday, there's gonna be a slight, uh, so after the uh, talk, there will be the poster session, so please, gong show and poster session, so please stick around for that. And uh, especially if you're presenting. And on Friday, we're gonna have a, uh, a discussion session. Um, given the uh, uh, close proximity of the two topics this week, uh, the organizers decided it would actually be better to kind of have like one big discussion with all the uh, possible participants. So that'll start at uh, noon Eastern uh, on Friday. Um, and we'll be updating the schedule to reflect that as well. Um, I think that's all the announcements. So uh, very happy for Fabio to kind of round it out with the last uh, lecture uh, uh, in his uh, series. So please go ahead. Uh, thank you. So since it's the last lecture, let me thank the organizer for putting together this very nice school. And also let me thank the other speakers for giving very nice lectures. And although, I mean, the school is not finished, we have other good events in the next days, but it's good. Uh, so today, today's lectures will be um, based on uh, these, uh, mainly on this uh, sequence of papers. And uh, I will talk about, so the relation between six dimension and five dimension uh, in the context of uh, superconformal field theories. And via, especially via uh, duality, a string theory duality, which is called MF theory duality. And the outline of, the, of this lecture, so we start by briefly reviewing 60 theories from F theory. And then I will talk about this MF theory duality. Uh, and in particular, this uh, is related to 60 theories on a, on a circle. Then I will um, explain how geometrically a 60 or a 5D, uh, I mean, a, the a theory in, a, in 5D as a 60 or a 5D UV completion. So finally, uh, I will also talk about some advantages of having this perspective, this perspective especially uh, for 5D. So where we can really detect like uh, some uh, uh, non-trivial properties like flavor symmetry of the super conformal point by using like this uh, 60, uh, 5D duality. And then I will try to connect and I will try to talk about the reverse. So what kind of advantages we have for, uh, for 60 in using uh, these 5D theories, which are uh, dual via this MF theory duality. Okay, so let me start by briefly reviewing the uh, F theory construction. So F theory on uh, Calabiao freefold, especially non-compact Calabiao freefold, they can engineer six dimensional superconformal field theory. And in particular, the structure of this uh, uh, freefold will be given by the, uh, by the following. So we will have a two dimensional base. So this one. Uh, parameterized by, for example, coordinate U and B, and we will have an elliptic fiber, uh, fiber over these, uh, these two-dimensional base. And this defines the Calabi-Yau freefall where we put uh, this uh, uh, well, uh, 12-dimensional 12, 12 theory, which is F-theory. And when, uh, for a CFT, the, um, this uh, calabi can have a singularity. At So there can be an orbifold. Singularity. At u equal d equal to zero. And this orbit of singularity will be of this type. Where gamma this time is a subgroup of u2. So in order to, to engineer a uh, a to a, a uh, one comma zero theory in six dimension, we don't need the gamma to be an SU2, so we don't need like a Calabi-Yau base, but this base, it, it, it needs to be complicated. Okay, so since the, this, this space is not compact, this means that gravity is the couple. So similar to the type 2A construction where we have these non-compact brains, 
Uh, this means that uh, basically the gravitational part of the type 2b action in this case uh, will, be, uh, will be weighted by the volume of this space. So the gravity is basically uh, the, by the inverse of the volume, so the gravity uh, by the volume, so the gravity is the capital. And moreover, T2 is the varying axial dilaton. So we have a type 2b, and T2 is not really, in fact, theory is not really a physical uh, T2, but it's uh, basically the varying axial dilaton with complex structures given by this. And T2 can be generically singular. And in particular, uh, well, this singularity will be important, uh, as I will show in a second. So the, this, the CFT, so this Calabiao, can be of two types. So as I told you, we can have orbifold singularity at uv equals zero. So in this case, the orbifold singularity will be here. And in order to make sense of this theory, so we can, in order to really see what happens, uh, we need to actually get rid of this singularity. And this is called the resolution. Of, uh, of the singularity. So resolving the singularity roughly means that we are replacing uh, the singular point with a bunch of uh, P1. So P1 are just uh, two-dimensional sphere. So this, these are a collection of P1 uh, labeled by sigma. And on top of this P1, the fiber can be singular. So the, the shape of the fiber is governed by this equation, which is the so-called so -called Weierstrass equation. So this is an equation on a two-dimensional complex uh, space. So it cuts out a one-dimensional complex locus, which is a T2, at, uh, which is at, an, an, a torus. So uh, F and G, they depend on the coordinate of the base. So for example, UI and VI would be local coordinate of these P1s as well as these non-compact parts. And delta is the discriminant locus of this equation. So we can calculate the discriminant for this uh, equation and it gives this one. So how the uh, T2 can be singular? Well, it can be singular because it can pinch at the point and it can have different types of singularity. And this type of singularity, uh, there are like, different because they have a different deficit angle when, when this torus pinches. Or in other words, in terms of the equation, it means that there is a vanishing degrees for f and g. So f and g vanish uh, with these coordinates and it vanishes as some degrees. And this by the so-called Kodaira classification, which is just, a, 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 I mean, at this point, it's a nice mathematical result, but at this point uh, for us is a recipe tells that we have seven brain wrapping the sigma i, which can be P1 or can be non-compact sigma. So in the first case, so when they wrap compact uh, P1, these are these give gauge groups. When they wrap the non compact part, this would give flavor groups. And we can see these. Uh, we can see these because. Uh, uh, when we have a singularity, we can resolve the fiber in this way. And uh, for example, in this case, we will see that there is a sort of AN diagram associated to this singularity. And uh, 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 this would correspond, for example, to an SU type group. Uh, and it maps to, set, to seven brain wrapping these uh, curves in the base. Okay, so the other possibility is that we don't have an orbifold singularity at this point at uv equals zero. But instead, uh, we have something else. We have a, a, a more serious or more uh, drastic singularity at this point, so on the fiber. So this means that the vanishing degrees are bigger than for 
6 and 12. So with these, I indicate the vanishing degrees so of, uh, of, these, uh, of these polynomial equation, f, f, g, and delta. So if they are bigger than these or equal than these, there is no Kodaira classification. So the Kodaira classification basically stops here. And so this means that we, in order to make sense of this theory, we need to do something else. And uh, for example, we need to, we can, well, one thing that we can do, we can resolve the base of this, uh, of this uh, geometry. So by resolving the base, we, again, we uh, replace the singular point. So at so this point, there will be this singularity. So we replace this singular point with this uh, collection of P1s. And on this collection of P1, again, the, the T2 fiber will, will vanish, but not, uh, will, uh, will be singular, but the vanishing degrees now will be in the Kodaira classification. So let me also remind that this setup can come from, for example, collision of singularities. So we can have like a Kodaira singularity here. So a T2 which vanishes with a Kodaira singularity on, on top of this locus and a T2 which vanishes uh, with a singularity on top of this locus, which engineers, for example, SO, SO type. So if I intersect an SO singularity with an SO singularity here, or a knee type singularity here with a knee type singularity here, and so on, I get this, no, this non-minimal type of singularity at this point. Whereas if I try to intersect two SUN, so I, I have a A type singularity on top of this and A type singularity on top of this. What I get is just that this point is uh, in Kodaira. So an SUN, SUN type of collision will engineer like hyper at this point. So we see that, we see that from this type of uh, uh, non-minimal singularity, so singularity which are not in Koidara, we need to blow up the base in order to make sense of this theory, of the underlying theory in six dimension. And, and this means that we are like creating new tensor multiplets uh, when, uh, when we blow up this, uh, this geometry. And let me show you just briefly the content of fields that you get from, uh, from this blow up geometry. So the content of fields is the following. So we have tensor multiplet and the tensor multiplet, they come from integrating the C4 of type 2B, the Ramon Ramon 4 um, type 2B on the P1s. And this is equal to P mu. And the tensor Ti will be equal to the volume of sigma i. So this is the scale at the tensor scale, and this is the two form. So this is the two form. This uh, uh, is engineers the tensor multiplet. The vector multiplet are given by the seven plane, or, or uh, alternatively, this Kodara singularity, which are interpreted as seven brain wrapping the peak ones. So seven brains on sigma i. The hyper multiplet are seven brain collision so if we have like sigma sigma i sigma i plus one at this point uh, with the like with the vanishing torus with the singular torus on top of them at this point there will be an hyper multiplet Moreover, um, there will be strings in, uh, in, uh, in F theory as well. And the strings are given by, so the strings are given by D3 wrapping the sigma i. And the strings, they become tensionless when the volume of this uh, sigma i uh, goes to zero. And moreover, the Dirac pairing of the string, which is a Dirac pairing in the string uh, lattice, uh, the string charger uh, lattice is given by the intersection of, uh, uh, of the, so the, the self-intersection matrix, the intersection matrix of, of these two cycles in the base geometry. 
Okay, so just let me come back for a second. So we see that once we need to resolve the base, uh, we are basically certain that uh, at the singularity, there were some tensionless strings, as well as like uh, other matter, which is, uh, uh, which is light at that point. So this is why this, uh, this configuration engineer has uh, superconformative theories. So the general structure of this tensor branch is the following. So we have seen that we have these uh, uh, seven brain wrapping these P1s or this non-compact part. And these seven brains, uh, they, by the vanishing of these, uh, uh, by the singularity of this uh, tori, they engineer some gauge theory. And the general structure of the 60 theory will be given by, the, by a sort of quiver. So this is a, uh, like a quiver, uh, this is a notation for a quiver description where there is like a sort of ramp and then a plateau and then another, uh, another ramp, going down the ramp on the right. And the gauge group can be uh, all the possible Lie algebra that we have. So E6, E7, E8, F4, G2, SO2K, SO2K plus one, SPK and SUK. So, and in this case, we can see that it sort of generalized the type 2A construction and in, in the following sense. So if we have this construction, so we have a type 2A NS5 brains uh, and this, these six intersecting the NS5 brains, we can compactify on a circle the ninth direction. And if we compactify in the circle, the nine direction, we can, we can actually perform a t-duality in this nine direction. The t-duality transforms this geometry, this cylinder, in a tabernacle geometry. So especially the H and S5, so the, the, uh, the, uh, the flux of the NS5 brain, will, will give the chain class of an S1 of fiber, which is fiber over an S2, in the uh, R3, 6, 7, 8 direction. We, more, uh, more pictorially, what this corresponds to, so the NS5 will correspond to the shrinking of this top nut, so the shrinking of this circle at this point and at this point. So in this case, this will engineer an S, a sort of SUN quiver with hypermultiplet localized there. And, but in, in F theory, we can also generalize the configuration and we can start having like exceptional group or other, uh, other type of group, where, which are not SO, SP or SU, uh, K type, which do appear in type 2A. Okay, any questions so far about this construction? So there is an alternative way of thinking about these 60 uh, CFTs, and it's a, a sort of X-branch classification. So, so far we have talked about the, uh, the tensor branch, but what about the X-branch of these theories? Well, there are two types of 60 according to, uh, well, two general type of 60 CFTs according to this X-branch. So the first one are very Xable superconformative theories. So this means that the theory is Xable to free hypermultiplets. And of this class, on, of this class, the geomet the theory which are geometrically engineered by the uh, Calabian with no with no orbifold singularity. So the, the Calabian with no orbifold singularity at the UV equals zero, there will be of this class. And for example, this can be the E string. or conformal matter theory. A minimal type. So the conformal matter theory in FT or engineer just by intersection, for example, the two type, E type singularity. 
So these are all the theories that can be shrunken to a point. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, these theories are the, the, where there is no an orbit for singularity. Yeah, so the, the and the, in the base, the base is just C2. Yeah, they are, they are massless. Um, uh, Fabio, when you answer questions, it's actually good to just yeah, read yeah, out because the questions. The word, because, yeah. yeah, because the uh, the people won't see the chat. Yeah, thank yeah, you. So there was a question about, uh, so these are all the theories that can be shrunken to a point, a smooth point, I guess. And the answer to that is that, uh, yeah, I mean, these are the theory which are engineered with no RB for singularity at U E B equal to zero. And so that's basically a smooth base. And the other question is, was where there are, if there are, if these are, I mean, the hypers that you get, the free hypers that you get are massless. And I think the answer for it is yes. So the non very fixable theories instead, they can be, they can be divided in subclasses. So the first one and the theory which are fixable to 2,0 theory. that can be always free hyper. The second one is the theory which are xable to 1 comma 0 non xable theory. That can be always free hyper as well. And the third one is just the theories which are xable to combination of 2 comma 0 plus 1 comma 0 non xable theories plus three hypers. And of this class, the, well, the, the theory which are engineered with an orbit for singularity on C2 at u, u, equal, to Z, u equal to V equal to 0 are the one which are actually of this class. So any theory with an orbit for singularity at that point is xable to one of these, one of these free cases. So for example, uh, like, uh, yeah, like for a higher, non xable cluster actually this the last one this last one are theories which are not even xable so but one the one comma zero non xable theories and many other many other more examples okay so let me proceed now and let me try uh, let me explain uh, what the MF theory duality uh, consists of. So, so we can have, we can start from M theory on the same T2 fiber club Yau. And this, uh, the MF theory duality is dual to the F theory with on the club Yau free on the same club Yau free times a circle. And let me explain how this works. So the T2 is parameterized by two circles, S A and S B. So we reduce the, the uh, M theory on the circle S A. And if we do that, what we get is type 2 A on B2 times S1B, where B2 is the base of this vibration. And now we apply T-duality, T-duality to S1B, and what we get on the other side is type 2B on 
B2 times S1B tilde, where the radius of S1B tilde as this expression is the inverse of the, of the radius of B by T duality. And the axial dilaton, if, it's, if there is an untreated axial dilaton, then this will uh, be related to on, uh, on this. So there is an anterior fibration. This means that the complex structure of the anterior fibration is mapped to the, uh, to the axial dilaton of type 2B. And so the, from the M theory perspective, there can be M2 brain wrapping uh, this, uh, the, the elliptic fiber. So can have M2 on T2. And the, if this and the T2 goes to zero, this means that the mass of this BPS state uh, is also going to zero. So this uh, become light. But what this implies is the it, what this implies is that R B tilde is going to infinity. So we see that by sending this T2 fiber to zero, a six direction. So six is opening up. So in this sense, we can reach a, 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 a 60 limit by shrinking the T2 fiber. So if you shrink the DST2 fiber, there is a KK tower of states coming from the M2 brain and wrapping this T2. And also we can see that since this T2 goes to zero, this means that R, R, Rb goes to zero and R tilde B goes to infinity. And this MF theory duality also applies uh, for other B2, and in other dimensions. So I'm just spe specializing for the 5D and 6D case. Okay, let me define, let me give a geometric definition of a KK theory. So KK theory is a theory which is engineered by this compatification, so a T2 fiber club L3, and is a theory in 5D, and it's, uh, it's the, it's so the so-called KK theory. KK theory because uh, well, it's uh, in some limit, it, it uh, goes up to, to six dimensions again. So there is a comment by the yeah, I want to chat that you might not be able to separate T2 into 2S1 globally due to S2Z. And yeah, it is okay, patch, patch. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm, I just uh, wanted to explain uh, using string duality. Uh, but yeah, there might be some of this in this. But, but yeah, yeah, patch by patch, I think it's fine. Okay. So, okay, so what is the theory that we get from a general 60 a theory in the tensor branch? So in the tensor branch, as I already anticipated, we have this kind of quiver description. So we have a ga this gauge description. And there will be some B field, of course. And this B field integrated on S1 will give extra U1 in the 5D KK theory. So this U1, uh, this is U1 to the N to the number of tensors, where NT is the number of tensors. And more precisely, this uh, A, the, uh, this A U1 are two pi R B mu phi R. So where R is the radius of S1. Okay, so what about the couplings? Well, the couplings are related by the following. So the 60 coupling is related to the 5D couplings with this factor of one over R in front. And since the coupling in uh, 60 is basically dynamical, so this would be equal to phi, uh, phi 60. And the relation with the 5D coupling is the following. Because well, this is also given by the, if you count the mass dimension of this kinetic term, which we have, this is the general kinetic term in 5D, for example. So the effective 6D Lagrangian, which also if I'm sure today, um, can be reduced in some circle. Uh, can, and so if we just take like the law 
uh, KK modes, what you get is the following Lagrangian. So you get that the AI, so these AI1, are coupled to the topological uh, current trace uh, FYF of the J60. So these J's, uh, these GJ are the 60 gauge group. And then the phi is coupled to the kinetic term of the GJ uh, gauge group. But the GJ are the gauge group of this quiver. And we see that because of this coupling, so there is a coupling within A mu, with J mu, so with the current in, um, with the current, with topological U1 current, this means that the topological U1 of the 60 gauge group reduced on a circle, so now they become 5D gauge group, is gauged by this coupling. Moreover, the U1 isometry of the S1 tilde B, so this, of the S1 tilde B, uh, discharges the KK state, and it's also called the KK U1. And so the relation between MF theory duality, so MF theory duality implies a nice relation of the radius, and that's the relation that we have. So we see that RB tilde goes with the inverse to the polymer. And this would be an, an important relation to what uh, follows. So, okay, so let me explain how one can get a 60 theory or a non S5D theories from uh, this MF theory duality. So there, there are many possible, there are two possible limits. So uh, regarding, regarding this uh, uh, RP, so this, the radius of the circle. So we can take the radius of, so, to the circle to infinity. And this means that we have a 60 theory. Or a KK theory. Oh, this is really a 60 theory. If we instead take the circle to infinity, what we have is a 5D theory. Uh, the circle to zero, what we have is a 5D theory. Because so this is uh, rather trivial, but this implies something by this relation implies something about the geometry, the Clavier geometry. And what it, what it implies is that if we want to send the circle to infinity, we need to send the volume of the T2 fiber in the M theory Clavier geometry to zero. Is in this case we have a 60 theory or a KK5 5D theory. And whereas if we stand if we want a 5D theory, we need to send the, vo the volume of this T2 to infinity. Because this will imply that this will imply that this radius goes to zero. Okay, what, but what this imply? What this imply uh, on the M two brain, which frapped this T two? So on these uh, states, which frap the T two? Well, it implies that if the T two goes to zero, it implies that the KK tower of states of light states appear. Whereas if the the M2 brains on a T2, uh, whereas if the, actually this, the volume of this T2 is sent to infinity, the M2 brain on this T2 will give infinite mass. States, which are decoupled from the theory. So we see in order, so this limit will correspond to this one, of course, because it's basically the same. And we, it's, it's correspond to uh, sending the circle to zero. So it's an honest 5D theory. What this implies is that in order to get an honest 5D theory from a low energy perspective, we need to decouple some, uh, some states from the KK theory. And these states that are decoupled from the low energy perspective can be hypers, 
there can be instanton particles which are charged under the U1T, or they can even be W bosons. So we have this possibility. So from a from a gauge theory perspective, for example, we can have we can decouple uh, uh, these uh, these uh, uh, three uh, three uh, possible uh, states. Okay, but before discussing some example, let me just remind how we can read off a gauge theory from a Calabi-Yau free folding M theory, and especially from a smooth non-compact Calabi-Yau free folding M theory. So a local Calabi-Yau free folding M theory can look like the following. So a con collection of compass surfaces, SJ, which is a uh, union with a collection of non-compass surfaces. So suppose that we have this, for example, a collection of intersecting compass surfaces, and we have an orthogonal direction, for example, an orthogonal direction to the, uh, to the, yeah, to the paper. And this orthogonal direction, uh, we, which is, for example, the third uh, complex direction which, uh, um, of the Calabria freefold, will uh, basically uh, realize the non compact surfaces. So, in general, we, we will have this configuration. So, some compact surfaces inter intersected with some non compact surfaces. Moreover, if these surfaces are ruled, so they are like a P1 vibration over a sigma. So in this case, so a rule, fi a rule of a surface, for example, S1, is a P1 fiber over a genus G arima surface. If we have this structure, then we can read off uh, the gauge theory. And in particular, if we shrink in this direction, this geometry, this will lead to a curve of singularities. And this curve of singularities can be like, of, for example, AD type or of other uh, G gauge group type. And this signals the fact that we have a gauge theory uh, on, uh, uh, we engineer a gauge theory. But more precisely, the dictionary goes as follows. So, so this is the intersection data of, uh, the, of the, the geometry. So you have a fiber, so these are, these are all uh, ruled surfaces, and you have a fiber which intersects like this, and the fiber also intersects with the surface and gives uh, this, uh, this charge. So these are intersection number uh, inside the surfaces. And the geometry, for example, is mapped to the gauge theory data as follows. For the, so the Cartan of the Lie algebra is given by this intersection. So SI with the FJ, uh, with the fiber of, uh, of their own surfaces. The Cartan of the gauge will be given by C3, expanded around the Poincaré dual cycles of these four, uh, so the Poincaré dual form, two form to this four, uh, four cycle. So the complex surface will determine four cycle of the geometry. And if you expand the C3 around this, uh, the concrete dual of this four cycle, which are two form, holomorphic two form, then you get the Cartan, which is uh, uh, given by this anu. The M2 wrapping this fiber, you see that they somehow have this minus two, which is the right charge to be W bosons of a gauge theory. Moreover, uh, if M2 wraps like this fiber, so we can have a fiber, which instead of an intersection minus two, has an inter inside the surface and um, a minus one intersection. And these correspond to matter hypermultiplets. For example, in this case, in the fundamental of the gauge group. So M2, on, we can also wrap M2 on sigma i, and this M2 and sigma i will correspond to the instanton particle. These instanton particles are the ones which are charged under U1 uh, topological. In general, the volume of this curve are the masses of the particle. And finally, there is a quantity which is the uh, intersection. So you can, so the triple intersection of these surfaces, 
in the club young will give, will correspond to the pre-potential of the 5D theory, of the 5D gauge theory. So there can be other possibilities. So you can have, for example, a quiver theory. Uh, if you, if this geometry, so collapse to a set of curve, and on top of this curve, there is a singularity. But there can be also a structure of this, uh, of this geometry where there is no, no ruling, and this will correspond to a non-gauge theory. But we still have geometry that we can use here. But I want to focus on the gauge theory, on the cases with the with a gauge theory description. Okay, so let me just explain some example of uh, like of these KK theories. So we can start with M theory on this geometry. So this geometry is, uh, it go, is uh, as follows. So we have a base, a C2 base, and we blown up the, uh, the origin of this C2 uh, base, and we inserted a P1 with self-intersection minus one. And then the, this P1 will intersect the elliptic fiber. The elliptic fiber in this case is not like a, I mean, it's, it's a T2, but it's a, a strange type of T2 because it's a, an affine E8 T2 uh, fiber. So these are all self-intersection minus two curve in the fiber. And we'll, uh, as you see, they are like, uh, they form an E8 affine E8 delta. And this is interpreted in F theory as, uh, or, well, this is interpreted as like the T2 fiber of the geometry. Okay, so in 5D, so in, uh, in M theory, if we reduce M theory on this, the gauge theory that we get is the following one. So SU2 plus eight flavor in 5D. And in this case, the topological U1 of this theory is basically the, it can correspond basically to the instant U1. And in particular, this theory doesn't go UV complete in sixth dimension. And in, in the geometry, we see this because we have this T2 fiber. So we can shrink this T2 fiber. And by shrinking this T2 fiber, this will lead to the KK power. And by shrinking the T2 fiber, also the sixth, the sixth direction is opening up. So this is all consistent. So this geometry uh, is basically a DP9 geometry. So if we, the surface here is a DP9, or uh, I mean, uh, the way I presented is not actually a DP9, but it's a pseudo DP9 or a generalized DP9. But in, uh, yeah, in more generally, it's, a, it's in the class of DP9 geometry. But we can do another thing. We can send the T2 volume to infinity. And let me assume that we want to keep up, that we want to keep the, the fiber, the, the, sides of, the sides of the surface finite. In order to do this, in order to send T2 to infinity, we need first a geometric transition. And the geometric transition that we need is the, the so-called flop. So the flop is pictorially, uh, so it's schematically, presented here. So we shrink this direction and we blow up in this other direction. Or if you have a surface, what we do, so we have this minus one curve, we shrink it and we open up in this direction. So in this case, so in this picture, what we do is we shrink this minus one curve in the base. So this change the self-intersection of this curve according to this rule. So the self-intersection now is this one, and it also changes the self-intersection of this one. And what we need to do now in order to decompactify the elliptic fiber, we, the minimal thing that we can do is actually send the volume of this minus one curve to infinity. And by doing that, we get an honest 5D limit. 
because the volume of the T2 fiber equals to infinity. So, question, so question. Chat. question? Yeah. So the question is, how do you know that you should take the DP9 with the E8, but not with the AG8 minus one curve? Do you just take something at max? Yeah, that's uh, the, yeah. in this case, um, I mean, this was just to show that uh, there is this eta fine, which I will need later. But yeah, you can gen take a general DP9 where you blow up uh, like a P2 at uh, nine genetic points, and this uh, will correspond to eight minus one. Yeah, uh, it's it's just a matter of representation in this case um, because uh, yeah, I I I need it, I need this in order to explain something uh, in a second. Sorry, Fabio, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, could you just remind me how is it you see in this picture that uh, this uh, SU two with eight levels doesn't you recompute in five D? Like, how do you see it from the picture with the with the Dinkin diagram and all that? Um, so the, so these, I, I just want to claim here that since you have this T2 fiber, mm -hmm. so in this geometry, so the T2 fiber is, uh, is given by, um, you know, is a fine liquid diagram. And if you shrink the T2 fiber uh, to zero size, that uh, we, will, uh, in M theory, that will uh, uplift uh, the theory to 60. And it also happens that if you interpret this theory in 5D, so if you compute the matter spectrum according to this, mm -hmm. what you get is that you have an SU2 theory with eight flavors. So okay, the eight so flavor, yeah, the eight flavor roughly correspond to combination of, uh, so you have this minus one curve, but you have the combination of these with these, so this plus this, and also this plus this plus this, and again, and so on. You can, so this would be a self-intersection minus one curve in the surface. Okay, so is, the, is there a way to see from this picture uh, with the geometry that it doesn't need to be complete in uh, 5D, like rather than go to the prepotential or something like that? Yeah, yeah, from the geometry, it's just that uh, there is a T2 fiber. So any, yeah, any T2 fiber, um, Calabian in M theory, will uplift to. So if you can send the T2 to zero, of course, then uh, yeah, it will uplift to 60. Another comment is you can't contract the DP9 to zero size at finite distance in moduli space. Yeah, that's also another way of explaining. Okay. So if you look at the canonical bundle for, uh, for DP9 versus DP8, you can see the difference. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah, and yeah, from, um, from physical reasons, you see that there are like KK states um, from the M2 wrap in this T2. Okay, so yeah, in, in, indeed, if we blow, if you like send this volume to infinity, what we have here, the surface that we have here is a DP8. And the DP8, the DP8 engineers E the Seinberg E8 theory in 5D. So the, this is one of the theory that Ifan talked about before. So yeah, well, then it has a gauge description which is SU2 plus seven flavor. So we see that with the cap by sending the volume of this uh, minus one uh, curve to infinity. This will correspond to the cap in a uh, flavor hypermotic. And by the way, let me remind that this situation is common for all these very Xable theories. So we can always do this flop and send like uh, the, this uh, minus one curve, which is outside the fiber to infinity. We have another situation. Oh, can you? I think it's frozen. Let me stop sharing or share.
then we have another situation, uh, which uh, uh, let me explain this situation with this other example. So we can have uh, a geometry, a Calabian geometry. So where the so the smooth geometry looks like uh, so it's a no minus four bundle on a P1. So it's basically, you have a C2 direction and this normal direction, which is the normal direction to P1, as this uh, uh, normal bundle uh, to P1. And the fiber is, uh, so if we look at the F theory picture, uh, so this, uh, this theory is degenerate by a P1 and on top of P1, the T2 will vanish such that the Kodara classification gives that we have an SO theory. And this configuration is basically equivalent. So if we actually want to uh, express this in terms of the surfaces, uh, this it's uh, another like uh, good drawing for this configuration is the, this given by this. So we have the base, we have the minus four curve, which is this one, and then we have the Lipti fiber engineering the SO8 gauge group, uh, which is given by this. And of course, the fact that you uh, find that you blow up the base, this will uh, yeah, this will give uh, like a collection of surfaces. So we can see this Calabiao as a collection of surfaces which are compact and non-compact. So this green. Uh, diagram gives a set of P1, which is intersecting. So P1 is intersecting here, there, and there. So this will intersect the P1. And also this P1 is intersecting the base. So this, the, the fact that we have this elliptic fiber test that we have an SO8 linking diagram. And so these correspond to the SO8 gauge group on top of this curve. So what happens if we send the volume the, of T2 to infinity? Well, again, by sending the volume to, of T2 to infinity, what we have is that, so to zero, sorry, the 5D, we have 5D KK theory. And in particular, so in this limit, so in this limit, we have the 6D theory because by MF theory duality, uh, the sending this, uh, this volume to zero correspond to sending the, uh, the radius uh, to infinity. So we, the six direction is opening up. And in this case, we have a 60 theory, which is the SO8 non-exable cluster. So this is in the tensor branch. Okay, but how can, can we actually get an honest uh, 5D theory from this geometry? So in this case, we don't have any flop available. So there is no minus one curve to flop uh, inside out. So what we need to do is, what we can do is sending some other curve to infinity. And for example, we can send this C prime curve to infinity. And this means, so if we send this to infinity, this is equivalent of sending the volume of T2 to infinity. Again, we, here, we have an honest 5D limit, and this honest 5D limit is given by an SO8 gauge theory in 5D at low energy. And this theory, in 5D, it's, it's believed to be complete to a CFT, uh, so to a 5D CFT. So again, by sending the volume to infinity, uh, we can get an honest 5D theory. Okay, let me tell you some comments. Well, first of all, this uh, situation happens generically for theory which are non very exable. Or the one which are engineered with an orbit for singularity at the, at the origin of C2 of the base. So 
So this is the situation that we need to decompactify uh, before. Uh, so we need to decompactify uh, a curve without flopping because we don't have a flop available. Well, there is a, so there can be flop available uh, in, uh, in, in general, but for example, this flop, uh, this flop can basically divide the geometry in two, uh, in two geometries, in two sub-geometries. So this will factorize uh, the theory. But what I mean here is that we don't have any minus one curve to flop in, out, in and out such that now the, volumes, the volume of the fiber will be controlled by the volume of that minus one curve. But in this situation, we can take this limit, so we can take C1, uh, C1 fiber, and we can take the C1 fiber, the C1 uh, curve, we can take it to infinite volume. This implies that the, if this surface goes to infinity, this also implies that some monopole strings are decoupled. So in this case, we also decouple some, uh, some like string states from the theory by sending the volume of the surface to infinity. So here we send the volume of this curve to infinity. This means that we are sending the volume of this surface to infinity. And this implies that the monomous strings are also decoupled. Yo, Fabio, can I ask yeah. a quick stupid question? <laughs> yes, please. Um, so how can you uh, off or see um, to to which uh, like orbifold kind of singularity uh, like minus minus four or minus three curve would shrink. I mean, for for a minus two, I could see it that you get a like a Z two. But how can you see it for higher self intersection? Oh, there's a there is a like there is a nice formula in a paper by Jonathan, uh, Dave, and uh, Kumarun. Um, oh, okay. So there's, there is a nice formula. So you plug in. It's basically a continuous fraction. And that's, that continuous fraction gives uh, like the generator of the, and also the, you know, the continued, group. continued fraction, not continuous. Yeah, continued fraction. Fine. Okay. Okay, good, great, thanks. <laughs> uh, another way to see it is you can look at uh, O minus N over P1, and you can view this as the curve of self intersection minus N inside of a Herzebruch uh, N degree N surface. And what you're doing is you're contracting uh, that curve to a point. And so you get the, in that limit, you would get a uh, weighted projective space of weights 1, 1, N. Oh, I see. And already that that has an overfold singularity. Okay. Great, thanks. Okay, so let me explain now, now how, so, let me explain. Let me just start with reminding that in 5D, we can have the, so the flavor symmetry that you see in the infrared can enhance uh, at, the, at the UV fixed point. So from a UV perspective, we can have a current supermultiplet. So a current supermultiplet is given by this component. And in particular, IJ will be fundamental index of SU2R. The alpha would be a spinor index of S of five, so this is space-time uh, spinor index, and A it's the adjoint index of a flavor symmetry. And in general, at the safety point, the curve the, we have a conserved curve. But what we can do, we can add the deformation of such kind, where H are sort of a mass parameter, transforming the Cartan of the flavor symmetry. And what this implies is that the conservation is modified accordingly in this way. So with the, cur the, cur the current of GF is not conserved anymore. But in the IR, there can be a subgroup of this flavor symmetry, which is conserved and which is the called the so-called classical flavor group. And is given by, for a gauge theory, is given by the group that you observe from the effective Lagrangian. So the group that rotates, for example, Method hypermultiplet 
times the U1 topological. Okay, from the IR perspective instead, the instanton particle, so if we, if we start from the IR perspective, how this symmetry can enhance? Well, it can enhance by, because the instanton particle, they become light, and this instanton particle, they generically transform under these two symmetries. So they transform under the classical symmetry and the topological symmetry. And by transforming in, uh, in these, uh, in the, in these uh, two symmetries, then uh, you can get a representation of like a bigger symmetry when these, uh, when these uh, uh, states become massless. And what is a good way of tracking these states that become massless? Well, usually from a fatty filter description, this, is, this, is, this can be R, but in this case, we have geometry and we have like M2 brains. So we have in, in M theory setup, we have M2 brains wrapping uh, the curves. And so we can detect this particle via M theory, so M2 on curves, and he also the type to be web. So for example, uh, D1 between M5. So these are just like, so the web and M theory construction are just a dual picture of uh, so I'll just string directly do a picture of the same description of the same physical theory. So we have so string theoretic methods in order to track these uh, uh, this instant of particle and uh, when they become light. So the flavor symmetry in the UV can also be uh, can also uh, be accessed from uh, the INIR perspective. So for example, by computing the index or by computing this uh, magnetic quiver. And so by going down on a T3 with free T duality and looking at the three dimensional annihilation setup and uh, the spectrum of uh, like uh, operators uh, that, you had, that you have there. So there, are, there can be techniques. So this is a bit based on string theory again, but this is a purely like a field, uh, effective field theory. I mean, it's purely field theoretic. So there can be techniques to probe this flavor symmetry enhancement. But since we have a way you know, to track these states, these states that become light, we can actually use geometry to see the, the, this flamer symmetry enhancement. So for example, in this case, so we start from this geometry. So this geometry is, is basically the Eastern geometry. So we have, uh, a minus one curve, and we have an E8 flavor symmetry, which is on top of this C curve. This is equivalent, so yeah, as, a, as a presentation, is equivalent of, uh, uh, to this, uh, to this uh, uh, picture, where we have this S, where S is a DP9. And now, we, how do we track the flavor symmetry from geometry, and especially from M theory geometry? So if we want to interpret this, geometry and M theory, we will have the surface which intersects some non-compact divisor. So the non-compact divisor are given by C, so the, the one of the direction of this uh, base times this P1. So these P1s, which are in the fiber. And so this P1, so this surface, they will intersect these compass surfaces. So these non-compass surfaces, we intersect these compass surfaces at, on this P1. So we'll have, in this case, we'll have nine non-compass surfaces intersecting the compact one on this, on, uh, on, uh, on these P1s. So what tells us is that we have a set of nine non-compass surfaces, which are assembled in a sort of E8, a fine E8 Dinky diagram. And this is consistent with this uh, flavor symmetry of the 60 E string, interpreted from an M theory point of view. But so well, we have this affine structure of E8. And what, what, 
So what we can do in order to get an honest 5D theory is send the fiber to infinity. So we do the flop and we send this extra P1 to infinity. And so this means that we are in a 5D theory. So we don't have elliptic vibration anymore. And so the M theory, as already anticipated, the M theory on this Calabria geometry, which is not elliptically fiber, engineers the SU2 with seven flavors. So this surface will be a DP8. And this is the cyber uh, theory with the eight flavor symmetry. But now we can see the flavor symmetry from geometry. Well, again, in this case, there will be eight non-compact surfaces intersecting the surface, which is compact, in this E8 thinking diagram. And this corresponds to the E8 flavor symmetry. And now we can we can do more transition and we can play a little bit with these, uh, uh, with these geometries. So we again shrink the minus one curve. We, uh, so we do flop transition. So we shrink the minus one curve and we blow up the minus one curve outside and we send the volume to infinity. And this process gives a sort of, so it can be repeated like more or less 10 times. And we see that we get so this will be the fiber of, this, of the geometry which engineers in 5D the, uh, the cyber theories. So in this case, we have DP8. So this is the case I showed you before, but when we, when we do this flop once, we have DP7 and so on. And we see that in this case, these are pseudo or generalized DP7 where we have this chain on minus two curve, which actually engineers uh, this enhancement, is enhanced, enhanced flavor symmetry. Um, of the CFT. So this is consistent with, uh, with all the uh, uh, field theoretic uh, computation. Okay, so let me, so we see that we have seen that that six dimension can be useful to, the, uh, to five dimensions. So we start from a six dimensional setup, which in this case was given by uh, like, uh, this case was the DP9 case. And in M theory is a KK theory, which uplift to 60. But if we start like flopping out minus one curve, we get honest 5D theories. So we started from a 60 theories and we do this, uh, uh, this um, uh, sort of uh, flop transition to get to uh, 5D theories. And this was very useful in order to detect the flavor symmetry as strong coupling. But the, the question that uh, we want to ask now is, can be 5D useful to compute non-trivial quantities in 60 or like to detect non-trivial uh, features of the 60 theories? Well, so far we have basically started from the 60 theory and reduced it to the 5D one. But let's reverse the, the perspective uh, and then let's take a 5D theories, for example, a gauge theory, which we know uh, UV completes to a 60. So for example, the example I already discussed was SU2 plus eight flavor. But the generalization of this can be SPM plus one antisymmetric plus one plus eight flavors. And again, we can have and SUN plus one adjoint. So this is just free example, which UV completes in 60. This is, gives the E string theory. This is the higher rank. So, so rank one. This is E string rank N. And this is a two zero rank n minus one. And the question we want to ask is, can we use this gauge theory to compute non-trivial observable uh, of the 60 theories? And presumably, in order to do this, one might wonder whether we need to keep track the KK modes. Well, in general, yes, we need to keep track of the KK modes. And in this case, for example, with SUN with one adjoint, the KKU1 of this SUN 
it corresponds to the uh, U1 topological Lagrangian. So the KK tower of this theory is basically, so by this correspondence, it's the instant one. Correspond to the instant of particles of SUN plus one of joint. What we can do with this SUN with one one joint, where we can compute, for example, the one can compute the S5 partition function. The S5 partition function can be computed via uh, localization techniques. And these give result in a matrix model. So the matrix model has these eigenvalues, uh, sigma i, and it has a free field contribution plus a massive adjoint hypermultiplet, which we have in this case. And it has also lots of instant on contribution. So lambda is a parameter which is uh, proportional to the yam means coupling and the, the number, the rank, so then, so the, well, the, the rank less you and the radius of r. And uh, the mass is expressed, it's uh, the depend on the radius as well in this way. And in, in particular, in this case, we can take some limit. So we can take an holographic limit where n is going to infinity. And uh, so this will correspond to a holographic uh, description of the 2,0 theory in 60. And also we want a CFT limit, so we want to the coupling to infinity. So, moreover, uh, lambda, we want to keep lambda uh, fixed. There are two types of limit in this case. So the first one is small lambda. So small lambda means that the mass is way bigger than lambda. And in this limit, the adjoint hypermultiplet will be the couple. So this is the mass of the adjoint hypermultiplet, and the adjoint hypermultiplet will be the couple. So the result of this computation of the partition function is the following. So we have the following n square behavior. And well, the n square behavior is consistent with. SUN. So this is the large M behavior with SUN being an honest 5D theory. So now the adjoint is the couple, so it's not part of the theory anymore. So when the adjoint is the couple, this is an honest, uh, an honest 5D theory, gauge theory, which UV completes to a CFT. So the other limit that we can take is take lambda large. So bigger than m, so or m small. And the partition function in this limit now looks like this. Where sorry, these are sigma. Where sigma i are the eigenvalues of uh, this matrix model. And at the saddle point, so the the the, uh, the integral localizes on saddle points. And and at the set of points, the, uh, the sum of these eigenvalues square will go like n square lambda. And if we plug this back into this formula, what we get is this behavior, an n cube behavior. So an n cube behavior is a typical behavior. Of 60 theory. For the so let me also remind that this was the free energy. So the, uh, the free energy in the phi is computed with the, uh, the log of the partition function. And the, 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 the leading order of free energy at large n uh, goes with uh, the cube of n if, uh, if the theory is really a 60 theory. And we can do a, here an holographic comparison. So for small n, we, we actually need to match with the, super, with the supergravity action evaluated on, on the ADS6 solution. 
But let me just uh, let me just talk about the case of large n. So this is interesting because now we can compute, we can match with the 11 dimensional supergravity evaluated on the dual solution of the 2,0 theory at large n, which is ADS7 times S4. The contribution that we get here is that the, 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 this quantity is proportional to the volume of the S7. And, uh, and also an I0 quantity, which depends on the S4, uh, which depends basically on internal space and also depends on how many, uh, on N, basically. And, but again, this volume will be naively infinite, but we can do an holographic renormalization procedure like the one I told you yesterday. So the one yesterday we, we, we saw that by holographic renormalization, ADS6 can be expressed, can be proportional to the volume of S5 by renormalizing the infinite contribution with covariant terms. In this case, the boundary will be given by S1 with radius R6 times S5 with radius R small r. And R6 is basically proportional to the genia mean square. And what we get by, by doing this holographic renormalization is that what we get is that this the holographic this holographic free energy matches the field theory computation. So this match was done in this uh, paper from 2013. So this match was done for a 2,0 case, but also was done for a 1,0 case where the dual solution is an orbifold of S4. But the comment in chat? Yeah. Are these hyper, okay. Okay, a comment. The order one coefficient between all low and free energy do not match, as explained in 1608, between all low and field theory results for free energy. Um, you order one, you mean uh, not the n cube, right? Uh, I, I just mean the coefficient of n cube. Ah, the coefficient of the cube. Yeah, the coefficient do not match. There's some factor of 15 and fours uh, between, the, between the two theories. Okay, so this is a... Uh... And then there's a comment on the comment? No, it was not, not fixed. I don't think it's fixed. This is the review paper. I oh, see, yeah, yeah, there are some subtleties with this coefficient. Uh, it has to do with uh, potential boundary counter terms in the holographic computation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, so this computation is a bit subtle. But what I want to stress here is just that, uh, um, uh, and it, it could be a really nice uh, direction to, uh, to research on uh, in order to match this coefficient as well. But uh, uh, I wanted to stress here just that the, the behavior with n. And then in this case, we had an n cube, an n square factor. In this case, you get an n cube factor. So yeah, it would be interesting indeed to make this uh, uh, match more precise also for more one comma zero case. Uh, so, for example, higher rank key strings, and also compute in this way other observables. For example, 5D lines. Uh, so, if we have a KK theory, which uplift to uh, 60, we can compute 5D lines. And these, uh, when you take into account uh, all, you know, all, uh, uh, it, it depends on your limit, but when you take account of contribution, this should correspond to 60 surface operators. Um, in, uh, in uh, of the six, of the sixty, which uh, you uh, you completes this uh, KK theory. So and with this, I yeah, I leave you with some exercise and I conclude my lecture. So. Thank you for listening. Okay, uh, let's thank uh, Fabio for a great uh, set of lectures.
Um, so please, if you have more questions, uh, uh, ask them now. And I'll remind you that we'll have a, a session tomorrow at 9 uh, Eastern uh, where you can ask uh, further questions and have further discussion. And then, of course, there will be the bigger discussion on uh, Friday as well. So yeah, let me put a question mark here. <laughs> yeah, in this paper, it seemed to match. Yeah, I agree, this coefficient are subtle. Yeah, and the, I also checked the uh, unpublished, the, for the one comma zero, like each string phase do not match. So again, there's um, there's overall uh, constant. So there's a question in chat, sorry, Ethan. There's a question in chat. Could the three D n equals two or n equals four be constructed from M theory of theory? Yeah, in principle. Um, well, 3D n equals 2, you engineer on a club yaw from F theory. <clears throat> and n equals 4, you can engineer on a product of 2K3, for example. More questions? So, oh. so 3D n equals 2, sorry, in club yaw M theory and a product of 2K. Free in uh, again in theory. More questions? Okay, I've got one. Uh, how about the one over n behavior of the free energies? Um, so perhaps the relative coefficients are not matching, but do the subleading, uh, maybe the overall coefficient doesn't match, but do the one over n corrections match? Oh. I've been computed. Yeah, I don't think they have been computed because people, uh, there was this issue with the uh, large and uh, coefficient uh, already. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe, maybe as you say, there is an overall factor. Uh, I, I guess this is true if it, uh, maybe, maybe this is true if it comes from the holographic randomization procedure. So if these mismatches are, is a, like a problem with the holographic randomization procedure. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Still got time. So maybe I interrupted Ethan before. Sorry about that. What's no, 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 no. <laughs> I got this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So you you were saying that. Uh, so what? Oh. Does, Oh, I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, for all this uh, kind of large end tests, there are this issue with uh, this uh, overall coefficients. So this also happens for uh, this check between, you know, surfaces versus uh, 5D lines. So this, this check works uh, for the Wilson line in 5D maximum superamials versus uh, surfaces in 2 comma 0, but it doesn't work for each string for similar reason. For each string, it's an unpublished result, but for the, for the, for the surface, it's published and it's reviewed in this paper um, that I sent in the chat. Actually, I also had an E string thing that didn't work when I matched to the field theory. Uh, so, and I tried to use it. Maybe okay, we should... maybe we can. Yeah, maybe we should discuss. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's why they they just sit in the Dropbox. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. At, at some point, I thought I thought I had a great way to do something with holography, but it didn't work. So. <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> is it is there other the anomaly coefficients? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we should talk about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's just the E string, right? The, the, the large and E string. Yeah. Yeah, large and E string. Yeah, I thought about a similar thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm not sure how to trust the holographic dual for that completely. Well, I, I mean, there's a, there's a general problem with some of these holographic duals, which is that, um, for example, in the E string case, right, you hit the, you take like uh, S4 and you quotient by Z2, but you hit the boundary of this quotient at finite distance in the uh, metric. And so there's a lot of. Yeah. To do with how to properly treat that boundary. 
Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think a similar thing is showing up in the ADS six examples. Uh, right. Although there, uh, fortunately, uh, we don't have this uh, log, uh, like regularization ambiguities. So actually, the mm -hmm. free energy yeah. does match on the nodes. Yeah. We've seen the examples we looked at. In that way, example. Right. 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 Also, I mean, there's. Uh, by, uh, I guess, uh, Ullman and the flow derivative type to be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we can hold on to more discussion topics uh, for uh, tomorrow morning and, uh, well, tomorrow morning Eastern and uh, also for Friday. Uh, not, I guess we should uh, thank Fabio again for a great set of lectures. So, do a little clap thing. <laughs>